Hello there. This is Tamara here with the young stinging nettle of early April here in southeastern Ontario. So I am, I've done a, a series here at this point on nettle. I, um, I have a video that showed the stinging nettle in its winter state where we just have the stalks and here is the one of the remaining stalks hi of the nettle um, from last year and um, so you can look around to find these types of stalks they have uh, I'll just break off this part to show you they have um, the uh, remaining kind of little seeds at the top of the stalks and um, they also have, as I've shown before, these kind of, here's a better one to look at, these kind of bristly uh, bristles on the stalk, which are the remainders of the hairs that are on the new shoots of nettles. And on the, as they get bigger, they'll remain these little hairs. So um, now, if you look towards the ground of these tall stalks, you'll see this year's growth which is now ready for its first harvest. So up close, you can see these little hairs on the um, stems, and they're also on the undersides of the leaves. And these are the stinging hairs. These are the reason why we call it stinging nettle as a, as a common name, because this, this friend will sting you. <laughs> if you touch the, the leaves or the stems to your skin, um, you will generally get a, uh, a kind of tingly feeling and a bit of a rash on your skin that'll last for um, a day or two. And um, if you touch it more, you'll get a more severe one. <laughs> if you touch it just lightly, you might not get anything at all. Um, now, the thing about nettles is that um, they are a tremendous food and medicine loved by herbalists. Uh, perhaps almost the world over because they actually grow in many parts of the world. Um, and so how do we make use of this food and medicine that has these stingy hairs? Well, when it's prepared by cooking or um, if it's if it's crushed up, chopped up and um, like pulverized, like blended, you know, into a, um, a smoothie or a sauce or something, even if it's not cooked, um, what that does is it breaks up, it destroys all these little hairs, which um, then no longer cause the sting. It's formic acid from the hairs that when it touches your skin, you'll have a reaction to it. Um, and so once those get destroyed, then there's no more sting. And what you have is this really, really tremendously nutritious spring green, which is also um, a really great medicine in many ways, but it can be it can be taken as a food, and then it will also act as a a safe, um, supportive kind of medicine. So, um, stinging nettle, these greens can be cooked like spinach, added to your stir fries, your pastas, your lasagnas. Your uh, you can just cook them in a pan, you know, with um, some garlic and some lemon juice, and that's a really nice way. Um, they have a, a beautiful, just rich green flavor. They're like spinach, but times like a hundred, I like to say. They're, they're just uh, so delicious. And um, the way that you can harvest them, beautiful nettles, I'm going to share a little bit about your goodness so that other people can appreciate you too. Um, and uh, I know that with nettles, when they get harvested, they grow back. And actually, they grow back with more vigor. And so they are a plant that's good with being harvested um, from their tops. And so the way that they can be harvested uh, so that they grow back is that uh, when they're little like this, you can just go in with a scissors and just cut them, cut them sort of towards the base. And uh, you'll get this little bit of leaves. Can I show? Thank you. So you can also cut them with your fingernails, but you can go in with scissors as well. And you get like this little, this little bit 
of, of leaves and stems and you get a few of these and then you can use them in your meals and actually a little goes a long way because they're quite um they're quite potent nutritionally but if you want to eat more of them it's also safe um they are they're just they're like a food you know they're just like a very potent nutritionally dense food um so in order to avoid getting stung if you're just just touching them with your um the tips of your finger and then going in with scissors uh, you can avoid it touching your skin but what some people do is they just wear gloves when they harvest them and um, you know will keep wearing gloves until they get them into the pan or the pot or whatever where the hairs get destroyed and then um, you don't need them anymore so that's something you can do if you're particularly sensitive to the sting otherwise yeah if you're just using the tips of your fingers and touching the uh, edge of the leaf you know um, it, uh, it doesn't really sting very much, if at all, because the tips of your fingers are less sensitive. Um, and I find that if I get a little bit of a sting when I'm harvesting nettles on my hands, it's actually kind of a nice stimulating thing. It's not bothersome. In fact, some people um, uh, will use the, the fresh nettles to, like, they'll put them over joints that are arthritic and painful, which will cause the sting, but it actually helps to reduce inflammation and move blood through the area and make the pain go away. So that's an age old um, remedy for arthritis and rheumatism and such. Um, nettles are super nutritionally dense. So um, people who have uh, lived through wartime in Europe will often tell you about uh, how people were surviving on stinging nettles. Nettle was a really important part of uh, their diet because it grows wild and it grows abundantly. And so if there's shortage of food, um, this is a really, really, really healthy food to know about. Um, and uh, so it its nutritional benefits, some of them that I would... Um, list off here uh, notably high in iron really great blood builder very high in vitamin c um, tremendous to support immune health and support blood vessel health as being a good you know being a good source of vitamin c many other trace minerals um, lots of silica turns into calcium in the body lots of phosphorus potassium magnesium um, even protein actually has been found in um, appreciable amounts in this leafy green and you'll notice if you eat it if you cook it that uh, it's, it's almost got a kind of meaty, like meat, like characteristic to it. And I don't really mean, you know, like fleshy meat, but it's got a lot of substance. These leaves and these kind of shoots, like they, they've got juice. And when you cook them, like they're a pretty, and you eat them, they're a pretty good chew, you know? Um, so you feel like, oh, I'm really getting something like substantial here. Um, so the nettles to recognize them this time of year, they're a little bit purpley because they still haven't fully, um, established their full green of chlorophyll yet. They're, they're responding to more, um, heat and sunlight and soon they will turn entirely green. But when they're young, like many plants, you know, they're a little bit purple. And which is quite beautiful. You can see that they have these ser very serrated edges on the leaves and the leaves grow in pairs. So I don't know how well you can see that, but they're growing like two, two at a time off of the stalk. And um, then of course, you know, the little stingy hairs are a dead giveaway, but when you um, look at the plant and you see the hairs, they don't necessarily look like, they, they don't look like they're going to cause this kind of rash. You know, it's not thorns that they have or spines. It's just these little hairs. But that is, in fact, what causes the rash. And um, you can just touch it lightly and then see if you get a response because the rash is not actually harmful. Um, it's quite safe. It's just fairly uncomfortable. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you one final trick about the rash, in fact. Um, if you do get a nettle sting and it's quite bothersome, uh, the, the medicine 
for the ailment is actually the cause of the ailment itself. So um, here is a freshly picked nettle stalk. And um, when I take a leaf and um, I just crush it up in my hands, so I'm just really crushing it and crushing it and crushing it so that the juice of the leaf starts to come out on my hands. If I have a nettle sting, let's say I have one here, I'm just going to put it here and rub that on and it will cool and soothe and uh, reduce inflammation and ease that rash up quite quickly. So that's actually the best remedy that I've found when I'm out picking nettles and I get a rash. Like if, if it, um, you know, sometimes it ac accidentally touches my wrist or something where the inside of my arm where the skin's more sensitive and I'm going to respond to that rash. Um, yeah, just crush it up between your two fingers where they're not so sensitive. You get the juice of the plant really going, crush it up as well as you can, and then just rub it right on. And then the crushed up leaf is actually completely edible. It won't, um, it won't sting your mouth or anything at that point because those hairs are destroyed. And it is um, really delicious. It makes you feel like this spring sprout shooting up. It's so tasty and um, very, very vitalizing. So stinging nettles. Welcome nettles. Love you.